Welcome to another movie of Wii and Semiconductors. This movie is about silicon carbide power diodes. Why would you use silicon carbide power diodes? Let's have a look first at bipolar power silicon diodes. These parts have switching losses due to TRR and these switching losses are temperature dependent. If you use a different material, instead of silicon, you would use silicon carbide, you can make a big leap forward in switching behavior. A silicon carbide diode is a majority carrier device. It is purely unipolar. So there is no minority carrier store charge and an extremely low reverse recovery. Let's have a look at this graph where we show the switching off of the diode. Vertically, the current, plus one amp, minus one amp, so this is reverse current, and horizontally time. Let's have a look first at the behavior of a silicon diode at high temperature, 125 degrees Celsius. The diode will switch off and there's a lot of overshoot and we'll come back here and then here's oscillations. At 25 degrees Celsius the silicon part is better. It will switch over here and you can see there is less reverse recovery current and less reverse recovery time. But silicon carbide is much much better and temperature independent for both 25 degrees and 125 degrees. The line is almost zero so the reverse recovery is much, much better. The features of silicon carbide products are a benchmark switching behavior, insignificant reverse recovery, and temperature independent switching behavior. Our parts are specified to a maximum junction temperature of 175 degrees Celsius. And the benefits in the applications are you will have system efficiency improvement. And this is, of course, what's very important to our customers. Reduced cooling requirements. So you may be able to go to a smaller heatsink if you use a silicon carbide diode. You can go to a higher frequency of switching. Switching frequencies already have gone up from 70 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz. We've seen even applications with 144 kilohertz. This is very important if you want to have more power density, if you want to pack more power in a small size, then you have to go to higher frequency switching. The silicon carbide device can do it. A silicon carbide device will also lead to reduced losses in the accompanying MOSFET, for instance, in a power factor correction circuit. The lower temperature of the application will lead to a better reliability and you will have also a reduced electromagnetic interference because these oscillations are no longer present. And the silicon carbide diodes have a positive temperature coefficient, which makes possible diode paralleling. We have the lowest QR parts in the market for silicon carbide diodes, and we're even working on a super low QR silicon carbide family. In this table, I can clearly show that silicon carbide diodes give the best of both worlds. Schottky diodes are good for VF and reverse recovery, but not good for inrush current and reverse current. A bipolar PN diode is very good for reverse current and inrush current, but not good for VF and reverse recovery. And here you see that our unipolar silicon carbide devices score very well on every aspect. So I hope I made clear in this picture why we in silicon carbide diodes are so good
for power supplies, for power factor correction circuits, motor drives, inverters, they will lead to the best switching behavior, reducing switching losses to a minimum. I thank you very much for watching and please be back soon for more movies of Wii and Semiconductors.